In this short video, we're going to solve linear differential equations using the integrating factor technique in a few examples. So we're going to find the general solution of parentheses x squared minus 9 times dy dx plus xy equals 0. We need to put this in standard form, so we'll divide every term by x squared minus 9. That means our function p of x is x over x squared minus 9. I'll need to integrate that, and in order to integrate that, I'll have to use the partial fraction decomposition of x over x squared minus 9. So let's just walk through the steps a little bit. Remember that we're going to factor the denominator, and then we'll have two terms, a over the first factor and b over the second factor, where a and b are constants. The way we determine those constants is multiply through by x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then we'll say, oh, all of the coefficients on x have to equal each other. That gives me the equation 1 equals a plus b. All of the constant coefficients, and the only constant we have on the left-hand side is 0. So then 0 has to equal negative 3a plus 3b. And that results in the solution where a equals b equals a half. So the integral of p dx would be uh, the integral of 1 half uh, times 1 over x plus 3 plus 1 over x minus 3. And that will give us two natural log terms. We'll have 1 half, and then in brackets, natural log of the absolute value of x plus 3 plus the natural log of the value of x minus 3. I can write that as a single log using the properties of log. And then we have these absolute value signs. So to simplify the example here, we're going to restrict our solutions to either negative infinity to negative 3 or 3 to infinity. And the reason why we do that is that in those intervals, x squared is larger than 9. And so the absolute value of x squared minus 9 is just x squared minus 9. And so we don't need the absolute value signs on those intervals. And so uh, again, using another property of logs, we could bring the 1 half in as an exponent, which is the same as taking the square root. So our integrating factor would be e to the natural log of radical x squared minus 9. And of course, the e and the natural log are inverses of each other. So that leaves us with radical x squared minus 9. That's our integrating factor. And so now we would different, we're going to, sorry, integrate both sides. The, there's nothing to do in terms of calculations on the left-hand side. So the integral here, I didn't even write the integral sign this time because the integral is just y times the integrating factor on the left-hand side. And the antiderivative of 0 is just a constant c. And that gives us our solution then, that y equals c over radical x squared minus 9. Here we have an initial value problem. Uh, we have a more complex right-hand side in our differential equation. We also need to put the differential equation in standard form, so we'll divide every term by x. From here we can see that the p function is negative 3 over x, so I'll have to integrate negative 3 over x dx. That'll just be negative 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And so uh, my integrating factor would be e 
raised to the power of negative 3, natural log of the absolute value of x. So if I use some properties of exponents, I can rewrite that as e to the power of natural log of x, and that whole thing raised to the power of negative 3, and that gives me uh, x raised to the power of negative 3. All right, so now on the left-hand side, I just have d by dx of y times the integrating factor. On the uh, right-hand side, I have x raised to the power of negative 3 uh, times x to the power of 4 e to the x. And so that just gives me, uh, after I try to integrate both sides. Remember on the left hand side, I just have y times the integrating factor. On the right hand side, I have a more complicated integral, but I can solve that using integration by parts. So I choose u equals x, so du equals dx. dv would be e to the x dx, and the antiderivative of that would be v equals e to the x. So that means that uh, I'd have u times v minus, minus the integral v du, which gives me x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And the only thing that's left then is to solve for y. I'll just uh, divide by x to the negative 3, or equivalently, I could multiply it times x cubed to get my final solution. I don't, I have not imposed my initial condition yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We need to have y of 1 equals 1, and that means that c would have to equal 1. And if I put those together, I get my particular solution for this initial value problem. All right, so in our differential equation, our linear differential equation written in standard form, either the p of x or the right-hand side f of x may be piecewise defined. And so in our one parameter family of solutions, we will have a parameter and we should be able to choose that parameter to get a particular solution, which is continuous. Let's look at an example. We're gonna solve uh, dy, by d, dy by dx plus 2y equals f of x. We're actually going to have an, an initial value, y of 0 equals 0. And uh, the function f of x is piecewise defined. Between 0 and 1 inclusive, its value is going to be 2. And for any uh, value greater than 1, any x value greater than 1, f of x equals 0. So we'll have to handle those two branches separately. Now, both of them will make use of the same integrating factor. So in this case, our p of x value is just the constant 2. So I'll integrate 2 dx to get 2x. My integrating factor then is e to the power of 2x. So for the branch where x goes between 0 and 1, the right-hand side is going to be 2. So I'll have to integrate 2e to the 2x. And of course, that's just going to be e to the 2x plus some constant. Now note that our initial condition only applies to this branch where x goes between 0 and 1. So I will apply that initial condition to our solution 1 plus c1e to the negative 
Make sure I wrote uh, e to the negative 2x. Oh, yes, of course, because I had to solve for y. That's right. After solving for y, that's where I get the 1. I divide e to the 2x by e to the 2x to get 1. And if I divide c1 by e to the 2x, I get e to the negative 2x. And so that tells me that uh, my constant c1 must equal negative 1 for this initial value problem. But I'm not done with finding the solution yet because I still have the other branch where x is greater than 1. I still have the same integrating factor, but now I'm multiplying e to the 2x times 0. After integrating then, I'll have y times e to the 2x equals a different constant c2. And so solving for y, I'll have c2 times e to the negative 2x. So we have found a solution for each branch. So we could write y as a piecewise defined function. And that would be our solution. Now, if in addition, we want to have a particular solution which is continuous, well, on each branch, the function is continuous. Y is continuous. It's only where the branches depart, so here when x equals 1, that we have to enforce continuity. And in this case, that means if we take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the lower branch here, that has to equal the function value. So it has to equal y of 1. Well, y of 1, if I just put 1 in the place of x here, is going to be 1 minus e raised to the power of negative 2. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right, I can just use direct substitution uh, because of continuity of the right continuity. So I just get c2 times e to the negative 2 and solve that for c2. So a particular solution which is continuous would be written piecewise in this form. So I hope these examples have been helpful in solving linear differential equations.